Microsoft Forms is one of those really easy tools that anyone can pick up and create some really cool interactive forms. But the complexity comes when we start looking at files. So what we're going to be looking at in this video is how we can stay with a personal form, upload the file and bring it across into SharePoint. Within Microsoft Forms, we have two different types of form. We have the personal form, which is one that only I have access to, and then I can share it. I can generate a sharing link. And any files that get submitted from that form get stored in the OneDrive of the person who creates it. So if I create it, the file is going to go into my OneDrive. There's also a second sort of form, which we'll explore in the next video, which is a group enabled form where we attach it to a Microsoft 365 group and the file gets put straight into SharePoint. But we're going to look at both ways of being able to take the files that are submitted and then do something with them. So in this first video, we're going to really concentrate on the personal form. So I've got a very simple Microsoft form set up. All it's got is just a single field with a file upload. And I've allowed that file upload to have five entries. So we can actually go through uh, this working through a multiple file upload. This file, when it's uploaded, will automatically end up in my personal OneDrive. So when you create your file, uh, your file uploading forms, you will get your apps folder created if it's not already there. You will have Microsoft Forms created, the name of the form, and also the, uh, the default name of the question as a folder. So it gives us a file structure. Now, when I first upload my file, this is where that file is going to, uh, going to end up being uploaded to. But what I actually want to do is I don't want to keep it in my OneDrive. I want to keep bring it across into a SharePoint library so I can then share it, we can collaborate on it and so on. So let's look at the way that I would do this. And this is one of the ways that I've found to be most simple. So the first things first, I'm going to go and create myself a Cloudflow in Power Automate. And I'm going to use the Microsoft Forms connector. Because within the Microsoft Forms connector, we have when a new response is submitted. And from there, I can select the form that I want to use, which is my file submission personal form. I'm then going to go and get a response for, uh, for that form. So I'm going to say get response details. I'm going to give it again the name of the file, uh, the form, and I'm also going to take the response ID. So if you've been doing anything with Power Automate, most of you will have probably done at least that part in the first instance. So what I'm going to really concentrate on is how we now get the file information and take that across into um, uh, into SharePoint. But the first thing that I want to do is with this, uh, these first two, act uh, the trigger and the action configured, I just want to go and do a quick test of this. Because I always like to do it a quick test just to see my JSON coming through and to see my files uh, being loaded into OneDrive. So I'm going to go and just do a preview of this. And this is my test one. And I'm going to upload, I'm just going to pick a couple of pictures. And let's submit those. Okay, so from forms, my response has been submitted. In my OneDrive, I've now got my two uh, uh, my two images, and it's the it's been named with the name of the file, with the name of the submitter on the end of it. So one of the things to remember is the uh, with Microsoft Forms, the file upload is only available internally at the moment. So therefore, it will track the person who has actually submitted it. But my flow is also run. So I'm going to just uh, get the response details. And if I look at the, uh, the questions output, what I've got is my single line of text, which is my name. But then I've also got the evidence here. OK, not very friendly on one line. So I'm just going to copy that out. I'm going to go and fire up Visual Studio Code. I'm going to drop my 
JSON uh, or my output into there, and I'm just going to format the document. Because this is effectively what I've now got. So it's given me a JSON array. So the array is denoted by the two square brackets, and then I've got multiple files in here. So the reason why I'm pointing this out is because when we go in and start working with this information, it does mean that um, we will see a loop appear. So just bear that in mind that we are working with an array. Even if we've only got one file being uploaded, it will still work in this way. But what are the key thing, pieces of information that I want here? Well, for me to keep this nice and simple, the only real piece of information that I'm interested in is the name. Because that is the name of the file as I just showed it when it was stored in OneDrive. But I need to make this actually quite usable. Because if I come back to Power Automate, let's come and edit this, and I go and add a new step. If I wanted to do just a very basic compose as an example, and try and isolate the name, it doesn't actually pull out the name by default from uh, from that entry out of, out of Microsoft Forms. I've got provide evidence as a field, but I don't have anything below that. So this is what I always do. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to add in an action called pass JSON. So pass JSON is a really useful action because I can give it any JSON. Um, I can put it into uh, the generator from a sample. It will generate the schema for me. And effectively what it will do is it will make all of those key aspects that made up that JSON output into dynamic content so that I can then use it further down in my flow. So let's do it. So the input to my content is coming from provide evidence. Schema, actually I need to generate that. Uh, and the, the easiest way of being able to generate that is by taking the outputs from what I've just got in Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code. I'm going to copy all of that. I'm going to generate from my, uh, the sample and I'm going to paste that in. And that's just saved me a lot of time from actually trying to create that schema myself where I'm prone to errors. Uh, so use the tools that are there generate, uh, so we can generate it. I'm just going to quickly rename that. So those are my files that have been uploaded. So now if I come and add another step, I can then start to work with that. Because if I just put a compose in very quickly, And if I say that I'm going to track the file path, and part of that file path is going to be the name. Okay, that's good. So you saw I had the dynamic content. It's recognized that this is in an array, so it's going to put it into an apply to each, which is fine because we need to go and process every single file. So I'm gonna rename this. So I'm going to do this on a apply to each for each file that's uploaded. So I know the name of the file. I know because I can trace it through the file structure exactly where that file is being uploaded to. So now how do I move it from OneDrive into SharePoint? Well, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can go and do a get file content. We can get grab the file content. We can then do a create in SharePoint. But Behind the scenes, OneDrive is actually a SharePoint site. So why not just treat it like a SharePoint site and use some of the SharePoint actions that we have available to us? So if I say that I'm going to add an action, I'm going to say I'm going to use SharePoint as a connector this time. And I'm going to select my connector. And in our SharePoint, we actually have move file. Now there is also a move file within OneDrive, but it only allows me to move the file around OneDrive. It doesn't allow me to move it anywhere else. Whereas the move file in SharePoint will allow me to connect to multiple different sites and move things uh, around as I need to. So I'm gonna say that I'm going to move file and it's gonna be my OneDrive to SharePoint. So my current site address. Now if I select my dropdown, it doesn't actually allow me to select my OneDrive directly from here. But if I actually went and grabbed my OneDrive URL and pasted that into here, 
then actually, if I click on my move file to move, it will actually now resolve and it will allow me to go and select um, the, the file from OneDrive. Using the file identifier in this way doesn't allow me to mix and match. It doesn't allow me to have a, a mixture of static content plus dynamic content. Because remember, the file name is dynamic, depending on what I upload. So before I go and use that file identifier, I'm going to put one more step in here. And this is going to be a compose. And it's going to be a compose, and it's going to be my uh, OneDrive forms folder. So what am I going to put in my uh, compose then? So I'm going to use my file to move to help me identify what needs to go in there. So I'm going to go through the process of if I was going to select a single file to start off with. So I'm going to navigate through my folder structure into my documents, which is, uh, uh, which is the default document library. I'm going to locate my apps and let's navigate through my apps into my forms, into my file submission, into my question, and I'm just going to select one of those files because that's effectively what my uh, file to move wants to take in. It wants to take in the whole path plus the uh, file name. So let's grab that part of the, uh, of the path. Let's copy that and let's put that into my compose up here, which is my OneDrive forms folder. I'm going to combine that from in my file path. At the moment, I've just got the file name in there. So let's go and add in there the output from my forms folder. So that will now give me all of that plus the name of the file. And from there, let's delete all of that back out again. And now let's use the dynamic content and let's go and put the file path in there. So now I've told the, uh, the SharePoint connector where I want to move the file from, let's tell it where to move it to. So let's go and grab my file. Now this time I am moving it to SharePoint, so my uh, Flowbytes site appears in my dropdown. Let's go and use my destination folder, and I want this to appear in my Forms Docs document library. And just in case there is a file uh, there of the same name, I'm going to move it with a new name. So let's go and save that. Okay, and I'm going to put that back into test mode once more. Let's go and test it manually. Let's come back to my file submission again. Let's go and put another test through. Upload the file. So this time I'm going to go for the white and blue and the white and purple pictures. Let's open that. So we're looking for white and blue, white and purple. Let's submit it. So now it's been submitted. The files have appeared in my OneDrive, but now they're disappearing. Why? Because my flow is running. It's going away. It's actually doing the move. And if I come across into my SharePoint site, my files are now moving automatically from my OneDrive into SharePoint. So we could combine that with tagging and all sorts to really make that an effective solution. So that is one of the ways that I like to move files from, uh, from OneDrive uh, into SharePoint if they've been submitted to a personal form. It's much less complicated and much less, uh, uses much fewer actions than if I was to go and do the, each step individually. So quite often, uh, and in the past we used to do it, we used to uh, get the file content, we create the file, we delete the file. It's, it, we've got an action that does it all, uh, all for us. And just treat OneDrive like what it actually is. It's a SharePoint site. So don't, don't forget that you can use some of your SharePoint actions within OneDrive to give you the exact uh, solution that you're looking for. In the next video, we're going, uh, we're going to do exactly the same again, but we'll go through how to change a personal form to being a group based form. Look at the difference in terms of where it's stored. And again, we'll also look at ways in which we can then move the file from that submitted folder in SharePoint to somewhere else for us to then go and process. Well, I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you do have any questions, please do feel free to reach out into, uh, into the comments. 
You can find me on LinkedIn at MattWeston365 or and also on Twitter at MattWeston365 and I will be glad to give you any help that you need. But for now, I hope you'll stay safe, look after yourselves and I'll speak to you again soon.